So it is about eight o'clock at night and I am down in front of the drum and bell tower and I'm gonna walk around in this area to show you what it's like at night in China and also talk about safety. And I brought my trusty partner, Hello. <laughs> Yvonne yeah. here. Yes. And so we're gonna walk around and just uh, kind of talk about safety in China, uh, specifically at night, yeah. and how we feel about it, and then just show you what the night light is yeah. like. I mean, this is a Sunday night, and as you can see, if you can even hear me, it's quite uh, lively. Yeah, it's very lively here. So yeah. let's get into it, and we'll start, we'll start our walk. Oh my god, was that a gunshot? <laughs> no, we're not in the stage. It's not a gunshot. Now, relax. Those crazy Americans run for the hills. What is it, though? Oh, it's a guy whipping. Uh, what is he whipping? He's whipping your whip around. His little toy. Um, right there. This is with the blue shirt. Oh, That's there he goes. Yeah. It's a very common hobby. A lot of men do it. Like, every day when I go to, almost every day when I go to my work, Right in front of the work stadium, there's like people swinging their whips around and practicing. All right, so we're walking away from the kind of crazy area and into more of the residential, quieter hutong areas. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about safety here in China. That's the whole point of this video. So I brought my wife, yes. Yvonne, and I thought it'd be useful to ask her a lot of questions about safety and have a conversation with her because truth be told, as a man, it's a little different. Yeah. It's always a little different. So it's probably different from a female perspective. Yeah, exactly. Especially if we also look at what it was like for me when I was living in the Netherlands and now here in mm -hmm. China. And then also we can talk about your solo travel throughout oh, yeah. China too, because mm -hmm. you've been on many trips on your own. Yeah. And uh, actually, if you ever want to see some of her content, you can go over to Go Yvonne yes. because we post travel content over there. Uh, not as frequently as no. we should, but that's where we get that content. And you can see some of her solo travels because you've been to Guilin oh, yes, by I've yourself. Yes, I've been to Where else? I've actually gone on quite a few trips yeah. on my own. I can't remember them all. Right, um, but when you were there on those trips, I mean, you, I wasn't there, so yeah, I, you were I couldn't protect you, so yeah. to say. <laughs> no. um, so how did you feel when you were traveling oh, on your own? It was always quite fine, actually. I would never feel unsafe. Um, I would just, yeah, be happy to travel on my own and arrange my own transportation. Usually, I wouldn't take a tour because I like to be independent and do whatever I want to do. <laughs> a little too then, independent at times. Yeah, make pull my own plan. <laughs> uh, and maybe that's like see right like a like a maybe a risk. I mean, I'm not too naive, um, but I'm excited and I'll do things. But I've never felt unsafe. Yeah, like, I mean, I, you've being been approached by people or something like all. You've been to like night markets oh, in yeah. like Hainan walking and stuff, around. walking around at night. And we've been to Hainan walking around at the night markets at night, and many night markets to be honest. Oh, I mean, yeah. that's one of our f favorite, favorite things, things to do yeah, is go, go eat, eat street things. food. And uh, anytime we ever go to those places, it's, we've never had a sense of like, where's my backpack? No. Let me make sure I have all my possessions with me at all the time, like at all yeah, times. Be, in or, being I'm like, walking around like, yeah. with my backpack in front of me. I've never done that here. Right. Because nobody would ever, I mean, yes, it has happened because I know a friend who, who got their phone stolen. Yeah, that, like, and your father even had an incident oh, yeah. when he was here. Um, like I tried to like rip up, like knife open his uh, jacket to take his wallet. So yeah, things right. do happen. So we're not but, saying that crime doesn't happen here. No, but I would say if we're talking about specifically from a female perspective and a woman, a woman traveling, like there's no cat calling, just looking, but nobody has ever harassed me here. I yeah, and really half the time when people are looking at you, it's mostly just because you're a tall foreigner. Yes, I'm it has nothing to do with woman. has nothing to do with criminal intent or malicious intent. No. It's more just like who is this person? Like yeah. especially when you're in the smaller vill villages. Uh -huh. Our smaller areas, <laughs> like last last week when we were in uh, Shongan, oh. we ended up in a city next to Shongan because it's kind of like a merging yes. a bunch of cities into one, and um, oh. we were going down like a real local, oh yeah, real real local, local market like, street. Yeah, it was like a a fresh market basically, but everybody has their had their tables outside and also stores right behind it. That was very local. And uh, yeah, most people were just looking at us, curious who we were, yeah. because like 
you know, we had people running up to us taking photos oh, okay, and being like, we've like... never seen a foreigner before. No, I mean... Young young people mostly, but yeah. even some of the older people wanted to take photos. Mm -hmm. And so usually when somebody's... Bonds. Yeah, yeah, the police, when we when we arrived, the security guards at the train station were wanting to take our photo uh, because they were just like, we've never really seen yeah, foreigners. Yeah, can, we have um, your can we have your picture? Because um, that was kind of like a nervous moment because we ended up in Chongan last weekend and... Um, this giant new train station mm -hmm. and there's it's completely empty because it's brand new and we were walking pretty much lost because um, it's so large we're kind of just following the signs That's, and yeah. um then like a group of police officers yeah we're like at the uh, information desk and we were yeah but they to started to gather oh, around yeah, us there was like closer, five of them closer. gathering around us and i started to film because i was like what are these people doing i assumed they weren't going to do anything crazy and then basically they were just like can we have your photo <laughs> like, like specifically <laughs> hers and okay. it was, so they just wanted photos but yeah. um but in terms of security i would say the only thing that we've ever really encountered or ever really had an issue with would be scams Oh, yes. And those are becoming less and less. Uh -huh. Or maybe we're becoming more accustomed. More aware of, more aware of it. Yeah. I think also in the last three years, because there's been less and less tourists, yeah. a lot of those scams have kind of gone away. They might come back. And we haven't traveled as much ourselves either. Mm. So yeah. We so they might still be happening. Yeah, we haven't been to super many, like a lot of, many, a lot of, can talk, <laughs> uh, a lot of like real touristy areas. I remember like one time we were trying, like, of course, at the point you're going to get scammed. Like back in the day, they were trying to sell you your Rolexes. Oh yeah, um, I had a, I bought one or two. Yeah, my dad bought one too. Yeah, because it's he just kind of fun. It's so fun, yeah. But like, you know you're being like basically scammed. scammed. Yeah, because it's not only, real. The only other time I remember, um, <laughs> the only thing that you have to worry about in China is traffic, it seems. That's your safety concern. I'll talk about that in a moment when I talk about my scooter. Um, but the only time we really, they really tried to scan it, it was like way, way long ago, like 10, 11 years ago in 2012, mm. when we just moved from Shaoxing to Shenyang by train. That's yeah. Why. Uh, and we arrived at your train station and they said, well, you brought too much luggage. Yeah. Uh, you have to pay extra for it. Okay. Well, that was first a scam because they weren't getting anybody else and other people had lots of luggage. Yeah. It's because we stumbled out of the train station. It was like probably midnight and we were completely lost because we didn't like we just we'd never been to that city before. No. And uh, so we were kind of trying to. For hours. Yeah, we'd just been on the train for a really long time. We were trying to find our bearing and we stood around just a little too long. Yeah. And then the like the security guards were like, hey, what are you guys doing? And then they saw we had a lot of stuff and they basically scammed us for like a hundred guai. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they just went and bought cigarettes and buy Joe <laughs> because and, yeah. And yeah. then when we got out, uh -huh. you the can say that. Driver was Hello. trying to, hi, Hello. <laughs> was trying to pay back. I don't know that he does anymore because it was so long ago, but he was showing like, um, we gave him a hundred Yeah, and he, and he tried to give us back a fake 50. Yes, because it was a 50 but it was brown and it had like the Yangshou <laughs> mountains on it. It was definitely it was not. not real. Yeah. And, and we called him out on it and then he, he started was, laughing. Yeah, and he's like, oh, oh, oh like okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, most you'll see is like, I've never felt physically threatened. No. And as a woman, you've never felt like sexually or physically threatened, no, no. which is important because that stuff happens yeah, a I lot would, in like, a lot of countries. Oh yeah, I have no problem like biking home after I would go out like sometimes with my coworkers or friends and it was like midnight or after midnight and I would come home yeah. or like even hopping in a cab. Mm, a yeah. few things have happened in cabs where taxi drivers are like, yeah, but that doesn't happen so much anymore because a lot of stuff goes through the DD app yes. now. And so like before when it was taxis, there was no accountability. Nobody knows mm -hmm. that you no. got in their car. Now, you just held them down yeah, you just the flagged street. them down and was like taxi, taxi. And so some of those guys, because yeah. it's almost always guys, yes. they were kind of a little creepy, yeah, sketchy. a little sketchy. Mm -hmm. And a few things sometimes, like one guy tried to touch you once, oh, yeah. but it wasn't like a serious thing. No. It wasn't like an, an assault. It was more no. like a weird, like, what are you doing? Why are you touching my uh, legs? Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Like, but I mean, like, compared to, like, the United States, I've never felt concerned about you being out late mm. or coming home in a taxi or a DD. Now, it's always DD now. Yeah. Um, or 
like being out with your friends and being like super worried like okay where are you guys where are you going to be that kind mm -hmm. of thing because like in the states depending on where you go and depending on which city you're in um i would be way more concerned about you mm -hmm. especially since you don't know the u.s culture uh, yeah. so i'd be really worried about where you are all the time because in the united states there's like it's just a different it's a different culture and there's just a different way of like there's a lot more criminality whereas here i don't and also in the united states they treat women i, I don't know it's hard to say because like i think for chinese women it's very different obviously here in china than for foreign women and that's something that we always have to remember is because like as a foreigner we're treated with a lot of respect has for um, maybe local Chinese people, yeah, it might be very different. They might get different. scammed yeah, more yeah, often or they might be more assaulted. And you know, you can read a lot of stuff online and you see stories that pop off on Weibo or something. Oh, yeah. And you see some woman getting like beat up by a group of guys yeah. or by like her husband or something. Yeah, and you're no, like, oh, that's not job, good. Like in this uh, restaurant where like women were like really beaten up. Yeah, and there's been a couple of DDs that murdered mm. some girls and yes. um, did other things to them first, which we can't say on YouTube. Um, but yeah, like, so there has been instances where that stuff is happening. And we're only talking from our personal experiences yes. and we're only talking about like what we see. We can't speak for mm -hmm. the whole country or for even locals. But from, from our perspective, it's been very safe the last 12 years that we've yep. lived here, you know, going on 13 years. And, you know, even at night, we haven't had any real issues. Like, even now, I don't even know where we are. Uh, are you <laughs> getting <laughs> close to your Baochang? Oh, the Baochang Hutong, yeah. I think so. Anyways, but merely saying, like, there's lots of people out. You can see that there's been lots of bikes going yeah, by, people busy. walking. Yeah. And that's part of it is, we feel comfortable going out. I have a gimbal and a phone, which is technically worth money. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that's like nicest, wouldn't but I wouldn't like feel this. comfortable walking around, not paying attention to my environment at all, mm -hmm. um, and having equipment out that could be stolen especially, very quickly and easily. Especially in a more quiet area. If you were like in a shopping street with lots of people, then it's much harder to steal something, right? But here it's like dark, there's nobody really around. Right, you I could mean, easily get mugged yeah. in many countries. Oh yeah. I mean, let me know about your country. Do you consider yourself like safe when you go out at night in your country? Or do you have to really be aware of your surroundings and what you're showing like watches or phones or anything like that are you more protective especially at night because we always think that more criminality happens at night for some reason i don't know the statistics behind it maybe i can look it up to see if more things happen at night but we often think like muggings and stuff like if you're in new york you'll get mugged often at night like yeah. if you're walking around well, i know there's a lot of like pickpocketing and like during the daytime in like touristy areas and yeah for example or rotterdam because there's got a guy out here with his chore <laughs> love nice. it <laughs> see um, guy just posted up eating yeah. chore on the side of the road um, <laughs> um, yes because there there's Pickpockets are like right, but then like, that's even going back to like that. I've never felt like I was ever going to be pickpocketed, and like again, the incidents that your father had mm. was 10 years ago, yeah. So a lot has changed, I think, in the last 10 years. Um, and again, maybe it's because we're not going to those locations as much, yes, but it is interesting to to think about it and to talk about it. And you know, lots of people out, as you can see, changes. Um, but back to like, well, you were talking about the states. If you were mm. to be very worried about the states, I mean, you haven't lived in the Netherlands, but I would be definitely more careful in the Netherlands when I was a student because that's when I lived there in like a big city until I was a student, and then I came here mm -hmm. after a year after graduation. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and if I was going out and coming home, I would like with my friends, we'd, we would text each other like, "Hey, yeah, we're home. Mm -hmm. uh, we made it safely." And I would like bike fast and not Yeah, you stop. wouldn't slow down for no, anything or, no, no, or no, linger just around. Keep going. And like lots of cat calling, and especially like well, late at night when people night are drunk. After you come home yeah. from clubbing and dancing and having fun, there's lots of cat calling. But even like sometimes, one time, I actually had to call the Dutch 911 because I was so freaking out. Um, I had to go to the train station 
bike along the uh, tracks early mm -hmm. mornings to go to my internships. And there was once a guy who was approaching me on his bike from the opposite direction. But then I passed him and he just turned around and started to follow me even when I like took... Doing weird turns and yeah, trying to lose weird... him, so to say. Yes, yeah. exactly. And he kept, kept following. following. So like, I was like calling 911 because I was like, shit, what is going to happen? I don't know. I'm not anywhere clear to close the train station. Mm. It's like early morning. There's nobody out in the streets. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really the only time I've been like scared. Yeah. And, and that was in the Netherlands. Yeah. And I mean, kind of going back to the video I talked about previously about the police state or whatever, like we used to go out on the streets. Like we'd go partying and then when we got out of the clubs at night, there'd always be police everywhere and there'd be always be fights. And not saying that that doesn't happen here. Again, we don't do that stuff here. So it no. might still happen here, but it just seems like there's not a large police presence out at night. Um, mm -hmm. And there just doesn't seem to be that same intensity. Like we can't even see it's each other. Yeah, right It's getting real dark right now. now. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Again, coming back to that question of how is it in your country? Cause I love to know about these things and again like you were saying you have experience in the netherlands yes i have experience in the united states and now we both mm -hmm. have experience in china and we're not the only ones you can type in you know how safe oh, yeah. is china and you'll have mm -hmm. hundreds of videos coming yes. up of foreigners who live here saying china's fairly safe right and, and it like that would be like also the perspective right like as a foreigner living here as an expat it's always different oh, oh sorry i walked past <laughs> is it a restaurant Sorry. Is that a bar? It's a bar. We're going to go have a drink? Oh, it's in a cute bar, yeah. Um, <laughs> cute little bar yeah. in these hutongs sometimes. Um, hidden away. Hidden away, yeah. Um, but yeah, like from the perspective of a foreigner living here, I'm sure like it's different when you are like like a local, right? You were born in the country. Where you yeah, and then you might have a better understanding of what type of crimes exist yes. and where they exist. Yeah, and and it, also we maybe have wandered into sketchy areas and never known it but because we're foreigners people didn't mess with us exactly they might have been like oh, it's just tourists let's not get yeah. involved because you know you know but i mean it's also like we've traveled many places oh, yeah. like when we were in the philippines there was places that we wandered oh, yeah. into and we were like no this is this is immediately we need to get out of here because we're probably going to get robbed but at the same time we've been to places like japan and super safe country also oh yes in yeah. korea pretty safe country mm -hmm. never felt anything weird um but yeah, it's just different cultures and different people, mm -hmm. um, different countries that we've been to. And again, depending on the touristy kind of situation, because like in Paris, it was weird oh, and sketchy. Yeah. In Croatia, yeah. it was okay, but there were certain parts that were kind of sketchy. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, so, whoa, is it a cat or a kid? <laughs> it's a girl. It's a, it's a very good imitation of a cat. It's, it's, a, a, it's a girl, a girl pretending cat. to be a cat. Um, yeah, but as you can see, it's getting darker and darker. So we'll end this and wrap this up. Not because we're scared, but because <laughs> we've talked for like already 20 minutes. Oh, don't, whoa, whoa, don't stop grabbing my ass, Yvonne. Whoa, 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 I got nothing there for you. Um, yeah, I don't have to in this country. Um, I mean, everything's digital. Um, anyways, so to wrap it up, this might get caught. I keep hearing that cat keeps distracting me. To wrap this up, like we've lived here for a long time. And even at night, I feel safe going out. And I also don't feel too worried when you're out. No. I obviously check up on you. Yeah. Make sure you're yeah, not I'll like... Let you know just to, yeah, you, you always let me know. Because you never know. Because, because the, the thing actual, is... Oh, man. I don't, okay. I don't want to get into another thing. Like, the only thing I'm like is unsafe is traffic. Traffic is just crazy here. It comes out of my scooter. And when it's busy or dark, that's the only, like, thing... I think it's less safe. But yeah, I mean, but that's traffic. That can that's story. a whole nother story. And traffic is different because those are accidents that happen, yes. not intentional Hurting like people. actions. Because like crime is intentional. Yeah. People are trying to to steal from you or to attack you. So that's a different situation. This has just been our little walk. We wanted to talk a little bit about uh, safety here in China and how mm -hmm. we feel after living here for a long time. Yes. I would say it's like a eight nine yeah, out of ten in, oh, yeah. in terms of safety there okay. are there are instances and there are issues oh, and i yes. think for the locals it's probably very different but for foreigners it's pretty safe yes, um definitely. and if you're traveling it's definitely safe you got to mm -hmm. be aware again it's don't be stupid no you got to be aware your sense, your, like, common sense. but you also don't have to worry about like crazy crimes no. or even petty crimes not because we haven't really experienced it 
I mean, if you look like a, a stupid tourist and you're like, oh, then you might be targeted. But that's in any country. So let me know about your country if you think you are safe or if you think that your it's country is yeah not safe or Especially safe. As a woman, if you're following, do you need to like walk around the street with your keys in your hand? Do you carry pepper spray? I hear that. Yeah, in when the United States. That? I've never done that. Yeah. So I'm always a bit shocked by that. Yeah. But, again, again, if you're a woman, do you feel comfortable in your own country or do you carry weapons, yeah. whether it's Some, guns yeah, or pepper like spray or anything? Anyways, if you want to see more, click on my face. <laughs> yes, if you want to see another video, if you want to hear me talking about the police state and my thoughts on that, you can click there. And then also, uh, we'll see you in the next video. We're actually going to talk about the Shongan trip pretty soon. So uh, be sure to subscribe if you want to see what that city's like. It was actually super interesting. Yeah. So stay tuned, give a thumbs up, and see you in the next video. Bye bye.